The Omicron variant has the global economy on edge, and it has been particularly challenging for industrial companies. In our last working lunch of the year, John Ford brings us up close with a CEO who is betting on new approaches to fuel growth at his company. John. Hey, Tyler. Yeah, Darius Adamczyk is CEO of Honeywell, an industrial giant with technology across aerospace, buildings, chemicals, and more. And throughout his career, he's had to make some unconventional decisions and play the long game to move his career forward. For example, Adamczyk didn't get into Harvard Business School the first time he applied. So rather than take his second choice, he regrouped and reapplied with a better strategy. And his bosses at the time, who saw him as a promising engineer, didn't even want him to get an MBA. I went back and talked to some of my bosses saying, well, I really want to explore this world of business and business leadership and general management. That's kind of what I want to do. And they kind of looked at me and said, well, but you just spent the last, you know, six, seven years of your life in developing yourself in an undergraduate engineering degree, a graduate degree, or working in this very exciting, you know, technology area. You know, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. That's you're meant to be an engineer. And then I kind of thought about that, which, you know, what they said made perfect sense. But I also felt, but it's not how I feel. I feel like I this really isn't it. Well, now he's the CEO of a company with about one hundred four billion dollar market cap. So um, I think he did all right. So what's a damn chick focused on now? Sustainability, particularly when it comes to energy and the products that rely on it. Though economic conditions are foggy now in the pandemic, he believes the world's need for cleaner, more efficient energy use is going to be a boon to Honeywell. Probably the, the thing that Honeywell doesn't get enough credit for is the kind of role that we can really play in that energy conversion. Because just about every relevant technology out there to the future of energy, we currently have. So whether it's green fuels, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's carbon c capture, whether it's uh, fuel cell batteries, which can really be used in mass for energy applications. All these technologies we currently have, they're not futuristic. So you know, I think we are going to need a catalyst from the government entities to really create a compelling case to invest in the future and have a less hydrocarbon intensive environment. And that raises a tough thing about sustainability as an investing theme. As Darius mentions, it does seem to be dependent on this global web of laws and regulations. The planet might need these technologies, but when will governments act? Honeywell's got a lot of interesting IP there and uh, stuff, of course, outside of the sustainability theme. Once again, the long game, guys. You know, John, I think of Honeywell as a as a as a measurements company, a regulators company, a kind of, um, uh, you know, controls company. What's their niche in the energy area or is it across the whole smorgasbord? Well, there's a lot, Tyler. I mean, they've got building technologies, right? So technologies for within buildings, commercial buildings to sort of regulate how a building mm -hmm. is being used and things like temperature that have a pretty big impact. Also, they're in aerospace. So if you think about uh, efficient engines, uh, that's important. And then safety, right. productivity solutions. So it's really kind of across the board, the sustainability play potentially. And you hear similar things from the likes of Siemens, right? Another industrial company that's trying to lean into sustainability. But, you know, we'll see how the market develops based in part on laws and regulations. Very interesting. John Ford, thanks very much.